So first of all, happy Father's Day to everybody. Um, Lisa and Hal coming to you on a very special day on June the 18th, because we're celebrating the heroes in our lives, and many of those are dads. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do is just, um, I wanted to hear from you guys on some of your heroes. Like, who, who are y'all's heroes? Sh shout them out. If you've got a, a dad or a, a mentor, a loved one that's been your hero, we'd love to know who they are. I'm talking about my dad. My dad was a World War Steve Todd, and my dad was a World War II veteran from the Pacific. He's uh, a Marine. Marine. Uh, he was boots on the ground during World War II. And um, joined at 17. He joined at 17 uh, mm -hmm. when he was just barely, I don't even know if he was really legal, but he got in there anyway. And um, spent a long time in the Pacific. He didn't just go in and out. He was back and forth. And, uh, you know, he's a hero. He really is. He uh, just one of those World War II veterans that uh, never talked about it, never, never really discussed it. You guys know those folks are everywhere and that. And never, I, I really, as I grew older, had to... Um, I just had to pull it out of him almost, you know, when we go to a ball game or something to get him to talk about it. Because I think the it, memories were so painful for him. He lost um, his best friend, uh, you know, was killed at Iwo Jima. And, um, you know, he just was very, very painful. But he was a hero. So. Wow. Thank you. Bye, Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Steve. Anybody else want to share about a hero? Okay, I will. This is Kristen. Can you hear me? Yes, Kristen. So I was thinking about my dad, as you know, um, I've talked about him a lot, but as somebody who um, started taking care of his mother and brother at the age of 13 when he lost his father, and he later um, just through just uh, being of service and kind of having to, to be self-sufficient, um, took care of that, and then on my family and stuff. He was a hero to a lot of people, but he couldn't go to the army because of arthritis. He never talked about it. Um, he was diagnosed with things through the years and we lost him early, but that never showed through. He was always a light, a source of inspiration that people could go to. And so I just love the fact that he just always looked up and lived his life of that. And so for so many reasons, he was a hero to so many. Um, and so it was fun to recognize him and so many other fathers. Thank you to all the fathers. And other heroes on the on the call tonight. Thank you, Kristen. Thanks, Kristen. How do you want me? No, let them go. In. Yes, Susan Everett. Hi there. So uh, I'll I'll let Judy say something different if she wants to. But um, so my dad and I had our issues. However, I was always very uh, proud of him in many ways. So he uh, like. Um, like Steve said, he lied about his age so that he could join World War II and he fought in World War II. However, I don't, he was not in action like that, but still the thought was still there and, and the, the action was still there. And, uh, you know, even though he never completed high school, even close, I mean, barely through junior high, he was a successful businessman. You know, he created his own business. Uh, and I uh, was successful at it, ended up being mayor of a small town for 12 years. And so it just kind of shows you that despite adversity, I mean, grew up in, in um, southwestern Arkansas in a very poor area. And uh, but despite those kind of beginnings, he really, uh, you know, he made something of himself and, and we're some of our successes are to show for it. That's beautiful. Judy, uh, you're muted. So Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Okay. We would go, our church would go to the nursing home on Sundays and sing and, and visit with people. When we would come away from there, daddy would always say, when I get to that point, just shoot me if you love me. Mm -hmm. Well, his last several years, he wound up in the nursing home. And after he got over the fact that that's where he was going to be and what he was going to do, he ordered a bunch, a box of cards, and he used them to witness to people about God. So I just, I thought that was pretty special because I 
he really didn't want to be there, but he used it. Wow. That's beautiful, Judy. Thank you so much for sharing. A anybody else want to share about their, their hero? One of the reasons I really wanted to bring this up is just because I think having heroes and which is appropriate on Father's Day to talk about that, having heroes inspires us to be that best version of ourselves. And one of the things I love about having a platform for self-improvement is it it helps us to reach down inside and really decide who it is that we want to be. And people like that um, have definitely um, inspired us to be our best. And so one of um, one of my heroes, and and he actually is a mentor. He doesn't know I exist, but his name is uh, his name is Brian Johnson, and he is the host of the Heroic Platform. And um, this is just uh, it, it's a it's kind of a, a website that Hal and I ran into a couple of years ago that we were just like, wow, this has amazingly powerful information. We've kind of followed this guy over time, and he's just gotten stronger and better, and doing a lot on social now, but. Um, one of the things I love about Brian Johnson is that he really kind of starts with the, the biggest and most important goal. And his definition of self-improvement, I love, it really resonates with me. It's being the best version of you that you can be in service to something larger and greater than ourselves while deepening our relationships. And I thought that was a really, really profound definition of really being our, our highest selves, which I know that you guys would not be on this call unless that was a goal for you. And the, the virtues that he talks about a lot, I mean, he has this enormous platform. They, they do a lot from ancient wisdom. Um, he has a lot of great books, current books that are uh, almost Cliff Notes version. And, and it's, it's just a great overview. But what I love is kind of the basic core, the four core virtues that he talks about I thought were relevant for today. And this is really the four virtues required to become our very best self. And the, the most important, and this is one that kind of goes throughout his platform is, is love. And um, that's love of self, um, love for others, love for our work. Um, the second one is courage. And that's really willing to act in the presence of fear, which obviously is, is, is very profound. And the third one is, is wisdom, and that can be ancient wisdom, it can be current wisdom, it can be science, it can be business. Um, and then the fourth is self-mastery, and that's the kind of the transition from theory to practice to being able to actually discipline yourself to do something. And so those are really the four virtues that he really kind of embeds in his platform, and there's hours and hours and hours of training on each of them. But um, just kind of the thoughts I wanted to share, and then if y'all have any thoughts with that as well, um, I, I wanted just to suggest that the best in this business that we're in together truly lead with love. And, um, you know, there's examples that we see of this on a daily basis. But the one I, I had this weekend is when um, Lorena called me uh, this weekend, you know, which not everybody works on weekends, but she called me and um, Lorena, do you mind just telling, you know, kind of what was on your mind and why you called me yesterday? Yes, actually, we've been um, going, I think with this is with Aunt Shirley, uh, who lives across the street and actually our, our youngest, Isaiah lives with her. And um, she has been sick for a long time. And I've been working on her. She's seen what this can do for me, but then I was making sure that she, I knew she's been on CBD through Isaiah, and I wanted to make sure that this was doing the best because she, it's, she's on so much medication, so instead of me going, yeah, I know, and yeah, go ahead, take it no matter what, with Glow, I called Lisa, I said, you know what, somebody knows more than I do. So let's get the best information that we can. And so I texted Lisa and she had different ideas. And I've done with this, this with Mary Ellen also, where she'll have a different take on it because they have a different background. And so to get uh, her on 
different product. So, but it was, I'm just waiting for her to feel better. <laughs> so she's finally listening. Well, I just, I thought it was beautiful, Lorena, that you care enough about your aunt that, you know, you were really seeking counsel and, you know, hopefully she won't mind me saying that she had like two pages of medications that yeah. she's on. Yeah, huge. Like, it's just like, I mean, I, I don't know that I've seen that real recently where people are on that many different medications. And um, so when I'm talking about leading with love, um, you know, is her aunt going to build this business? You know, no, I mean, she's, you know, she needs help. She needs, um, you know, uh, really health help. Because, you know, when you're on that many medications, like it's very tough to be healthy. And so Lorena, I just wanted to give you a shout out for caring enough um, to, to really, you know, dig down deeper and, um, you know, for us to be able to talk about, you know, she's been on CBD by itself, but instead of transitioning to glow, you know, we just said, let's add CBG. Let's just go up from just a few drops, um, you know, to five drops of both of them twice a day before we actually uh, bring in glow. So Leading with love is something that we see, you know, Steve and Jenny Todd, if you've spent any time with Jenny, you'll see how she loves on people and she'll just go from one person to the next genuine conversation. And, and, and so I feel like, you know, what Hal and I do is we have an opportunity to really observe our team and learn from you guys, but leading with love is one of the most gratifying things that I see from this team. And I want to commend you guys on that. And, and the second thing is, I think the love is what drives our courage because a lot of times courage does take action and we might feel uh, compelled to want to share something with someone, but we don't know exactly what the best way is to do it. So love is usually what drives courage. And um, I think as we learn more and more about how to communicate and what things to say, and we know that we have good things to share with people that that will even uh, become more prominent. Susan Everett, I think of you uh, when it comes to courage. And I don't know if you remember, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, tell me that quote where you said when you were younger about being in the dark, what did you do? Oh, well, you, you run into it. Because the faster you run into it, the, the quicker it, the fear goes away. So Susan is a great definition of charging into a dark room when you're terrified and uh, taking action and running into it. And so uh, I draw from that courage from you, Susan, as well. And then wisdom, you know, we draw from training and experience to know really how to connect with people. Wisdom is, is really important. One of the things is exciting right now is we have a completely new um, source of wisdom um, at our corporate headquarters. And uh, we're going to share some of that this Thursday um, in Evansville, Indiana, we're super excited about that. But um, wisdom, you know, you guys have a great collection of wisdom. One person knows a little bit. I love the Brian Johnson platform because he uses a lot of ancient wisdom. Um, some of the great Stoics and, and uh, other, you know, authors and uh, philosophers and, and draws a lot from, from the ancient wisdom of dead people <laughs> who've written things that we maybe won't know unless we read it. Um, but really nothing happens without self-mastery. And um, that at least nothing consistent happens without self-mastery. And so really um, it was interesting. They, they, they talked about a study that showed um, IQ versus self-mastery. And mm -hmm. which do you think is a better predictor of success um, with academics? Anyone want to guess? Self-mastery. You're right. So self-mastery, um, actually outperforms IQ two to one. And it is a predictor of all great things um, really um, in the world. So we're going to focus over time a little bit more on self-mastery. We're going to talk about that in the context of life and business. Uh, but today I wanted to kind of give you just a little bit of an outline as to uh, one of my heroes and what he values. You're another one of my heroes. Oh, thank you. How's Hal's one of my heroes um, as well. He's, he's done some very brave things today and I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, we're so another word for mastery is discipline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really, that's, um, so that 
it's a great term. It's a great concept, self-mastery. I think it flows and maybe it kind of opens doors that the word discipline closes <laughs> for some people, including me, you know. Um, but anyway, it's we're going to be talking a little bit more about this, I think, um, with, within our elevation call, um, as well as we, Lisa and I are talking about some of these concepts that are pretty, at, at a, with corporate, um, when I say corporate, you know, I, I should say with the least leadership, you know, in the corporate offices, it's it's not very corporate, really. It's not super formal, um, but we're working together with them to create some things that I think are going to benefit all of us to, so that we can be more effective in sharing uh, the love that we have for people and what we have to offer them, um, as well as for their health, but also the overall well-being which includes financial shifts for people. We're really working hard, Lisa and I are, to empower people financially um, on, a, on, a, on a more attainable uh, roadmap of financial success with the lease. There's a lot of great changes taking place. You're going to be hearing those things. I do think those of you who can get to Evansville on Thursday, Christina Durham and, and um, several others there, but especially Christina, it, um, have really put together a lot. Christina's put a lot into this event. Um, Zelise is supporting us. There's going to be some some giveaways. Can we say that? Yeah. There's going to be some giveaways, like some really nice ones for both ambassadors and guests uh, Thursday night. <clears throat> uh, we're going to have fun. It's. I think it'll feel different than anything you've done in a while with Zelise, maybe ever. Um, we're going to enjoy being together. We're going to, um, I think people will leave going, when's the next one? I, I like, what are we doing next? I think so. <clears throat> obviously we hope everyone can be there. That's on this call. <clears throat> what I would do is encourage others to be there. People, you know, that you hadn't maybe seen in business, maybe heck they might not even be on your team, but you know, them. invite them to come invite some people to be there. So. And, and uh, speaking of, you know, back to the courage, um, it takes a lot of courage uh, to put these meetings together. And Christina, I think about you and the courage that you've had since day one, because, you know, I think of you saying fortune favors the, I didn't hear you, you're on mute. Bold. The bold. And you are one of those bold ones that your courage is really opening up opportunities, not just for the people who are coming to the meeting, but those who are fortunate to be invited to the meeting as well. And sometimes when we are so comfortable with each other, you know, we're, we're, we're now not as suffering like we were prior to using these therapies. It, it's sometimes easy just to get comfortable with each other and, and not to really continue to have the courage to think who needs to hear this that has not heard it yet, or maybe they've heard it yet and they have not made, made a decision. So um, kudos to you on, on your courage to bring everybody together like this. Thank you. Really proud, mm -hmm. proud of that. Did you want to add to that? Or, mm -hmm. Okay. So just um, anybody else have any thoughts about those topics? Courage, love, self-mastery, wisdom. We're going to uh, just wanted to take a pause there for um, any other comments or um, questions that you guys have. And then we're going to real quickly um, have a quick story to share with y'all. So well, I'm going to speak up, Lisa, you know, and I want, to thank, I, I want to thank you and how and I just everybody on this call knows and, and uh, just how blessed we are that you you and how dig down and teach us these things. Y'all are incredible. And you just give, give, give. And I, I we're, I'm just so thankful for that. Y'all, y'all are just an amazing um example of someone for us to look up to and emulate so thank y'all very much well thank you uh to steve and jenny because uh i'm actually doing we're having a little conversation about sleep tuesday with the healthy living gr living group that i'm i'm in and i listened to steve todd's sleep lecture twice while walking yesterday and if you guys have not heard that not only will you learn a ton from it, but it is a great shareable tool. Uh, he, he just does an amazing job of covering the highlights of sleep. And he talks about dream 
r and r glow and shield in a way that I've not heard um, anybody present where it before. can you find that Lisa under resources under resources the back office back office. if you can't find it let me know I save it on my notes on my phone all the good stuff you guys yeah when you hear I something save it that on my you really notes. like that you think I want to share that you save it like so you can go right to it so you don't have to even go back to your back office like, save and save paste it. it that's yeah. that stuff is really good I was thinking if I was really smart I'd put together a drip campaign and I'd make everybody who's using our products listen to Mariel Weintraub then I would have them listen to Steve Todd because it's that good. So thank you to you, uh, Jenny and Steve, for carrying on that tradition of excellence, Steve, that your father started. All right. So we want to just real quick jump over to our leaderboard with Zelise and recognize those. This is the today's the 18th of June, and we do have some folks on the leaderboard on the enrollment. Uh, hopefully, some of y'all are working towards some of that extra cash. We've earned some extra cash this yeah. month, haven't we? That's nice. Oh, believe me. <laughs> I like some extra cash. Anyway, uh, at 23, Steve and Jenny Todd in Florida. At number 22, my favorite number 22, Mary Ellen Ziliak. Congratulations, and Mary Ellen Roger. With a new phone. That's right. At number 16, Amelia and uh, Michael Blair. We're not just Amelia. It's Michael, too. Um, and then also at number three uh, is once again, Hal and Lisa, and uh, we're trying to chase down the top, you know, it's just, it's not really we're chasing, we're just, you know, when you're in the game, you're in the game, right? So anyway, there's there you go on the leaderboard. And then on the volume board, we have my mom, precious Helen Henson at number nine. And, uh, you know, it's two months in a row, she's loading up on products, you know, you I, don't you don't like go, get to 85 looking <laughs> amazing with no medication without uh, any plan. That's for sure. And uh, and then at number six is Blue uh, Blue Angel Dental, which again is Steve and Jenny Todd. So anyway, hey, I want to tell you all, I think uh, this time next year it's going to take a lot more to get on the leaderboard. So start gearing up. I'm just telling you, start gearing up for, for growth. But what's really cool is when you see people on your team. So. Uh, we already talked about the June 22nd event. I know Lisa is has bringing on uh, here in just a minute, going to do a little quick interview with one of y'all who doesn't speak a lot, but uh, we got a little story we want you to hear as we're closing out. Again, I want to say I hope all the dads had a great Father's Day. I also want to say this, um, you know, on Father's Day, uh, for a lot of dads and kids, it's a great day. I will say for um for some people, both dads, moms, kids, Father's Day isn't always the best day. Sometimes it can be a really difficult day, depending on the relationships. And so, you know, you're not always having Father's Day is just not always the best day. And sometimes Mother's Day is not always the best day for a lot of different reasons. And so I just want to acknowledge that sometimes while we're celebrating the great things about Father's Day, we also want to acknowledge that for some people, it's one of the tougher days. Um, and sometimes it's a mixed bag. And so today, for me, this year's Father's Day, a lot to be grateful for. But it's also for me, it's been a real emotional day for me. It's been a difficult day. And um, uh, I've made some decisions to do some things in regards to, to my life, my kids, and some of those things. And I had to really step out and courage today to do some things. And even this week, and, um, uh, you know, it's still hard. It's still some of the things are hard. Relationships are hard, especially with broken relationships when it's really close like that. And so um, but we, you know, you find out a lot about yourself when things are difficult or when things don't go the way that you, you really hope for them to and that you wanted them to. And so. Um, as a result of that, sometimes we just need to kind of go quiet and, and sit back and take care of yourself. And so part of what I've done today, not all of what I've done today, was, um, you know, I just uh, watched, uh, been watching some U.S. Open and uh, the golf tournament and following some of my favorite people, uh, but also stepped out and did some things in courage. It had nothing to do with business, have to do with life. Um, so, you know, I just want to acknowledge, not just for me, but what I know is there can't be, you can't have 16 to 20 people on a call and not 
have some of those kinds of things on a day like Father's Day or Mother's Day. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge that for myself and for some of you who don't, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's not all rain, rainbows and, and uh, unicorns <laughs> on days like today for all the relationships. So anyway, let's go on to. Uh, yeah, well, I wanted to uh, bring Judy Baker from Illinois to the line. And uh, Judy, I, I wanted to hear your Lachey story. Okay. Um, a couple of months ago, I had a lumpectomy, which was followed up by 19 treatments of radiation. When I first started going in, I had to wear a mask. Notice the Zelise. <laughs> and when they, when they uh, offered to write me a prescription for a cream to help with the radiation burn, I pointed to the mask and I said, I've got that covered. My treatment was morning, no, yeah, morning, these two products, the, I can't read without my glasses, the, the is, neck and the neck cream. I can't get them the in serum. the right order. Yeah, the serum. serum. Yeah. And then, and the other, and my night was, oh, it just went to the floor. My night thing was the. Uh, Replenish. Night cream. And the body, body butter. And body butter. Morning, night. Of course, after washing my face, obviously. And did that. At the end of 19 treatments, the uh, physician's assistant that was in checking me out looked at me and said, I've been doing this for 18 months and you are in the top five of people that did not have an adverse reaction. Wow. Thank you, Lachey. Wow, so Judy. Awesome. So not having an adverse reaction from the radiation and right. um, because you were using all of those products on the yep. skin where you were being radiated. Yep. Isn't that interesting? I have a question. Did they have a regimen they were going to recommend for you outside of Zelise, or they were just prepping you for adverse results? They were ready to write me a prescription for something that I said I would need to use on a daily basis. And I said, no, thanks for the prescription. I've got it covered. I so, wonder, yeah, how, they... many... I wonder how many people had their own got that covered uh, statement. I don't know. I doubt I handed, it. I, those little cards that have the Lachey stuff in them, the, the original stuff. I handed out samples where people are saying, well, you're looking pretty good. And I said, this is what I'm using. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's, great. it's interesting because uh, I've never, ever heard that before, uh, Judy. So, I mean, obviously your skin looks great. And Thank when you. Susan, I, I'd kind of gotten a little bit of word about just, you know, that you had gotten a compliment about that. I just thought, cause your skin looks so good. Yeah, but it's more than that. Yeah, it's that your skin top survives. Five. <laughs> top five. Yeah. Dang, girl, that's uh, that's really awesome. I, I don't know if you guys um, have have ever heard of anybody that has been going through radiation that has used body butter or any of the other products um, as a protection, but that's something that can help every single person. Yeah. And um, Judy, I um, not only um, appreciate you sharing your story, but uh, we're just so proud of your courage and getting through your own diagnosis and your treatment, which, you know, yeah, Ronnie's um, giving you some, some applause Thank on you. that. Um, Thank you. You're a courageous woman. And I know that you have thought for yourself on that. We and I have had a few conversations and um, honestly, guys, when you're, when you're willing to take control of your own health and say, I'm going to get all the facts and then I'm going to make my own decision and nobody's going to make it for me that is courage. And Judy, you show that. So Thank you. out of you. I've had a lot of support. Thank you for that. And, and family and friends. I've had church. I've had a lot of support. Well, and, and for me, you know, it's, it's beautiful. So Judy is Susan's sister. And um, Susan, ha tell us how you got Judy. How did you twist her arm to get her in the business? I, I just want to hear that story in, in conclusion here. We were on a trip to Florida. We had a, a, I own a timeshare. So we were down in Sarasota for a week and Judy was there with me. And, and this is when I very, you know, pretty early on when I started. And so I would listen to a lot of the YouTube videos that Dr. Matt Andrew did. And so we're sitting under the cabana and she's doing her Sudoku puzzles and all that stuff. And I'm listening to Dr. Andrew's uh, stuff. And, you know, I'm not 
but I'm not even talking to her about it. And, you know, pretty soon I see her kind of, you know, <laughs> leaning over and, watching and starting to ask me questions. And she ended up, no, so really, I didn't sell her on it. Dr. Andre did. <laughs> did she come kicking and screaming? Well, not really. She was curious. She heard enough about, you know, about the science of it, about how it could help and how it was different and how, you know, this, you know, really understood did a lot about it and wanted to try it. So I think, I can't remember now, I think she just started out on the ultracell at that time because that was pretty much the only thing I was marketing. So awesome. yeah, I thought it was hilarious that she started asking me questions. I didn't even know she was listening. Well, so here's what, yeah, here's what I want to say. And we're going to be talking more about this and really trying to, what I would say is uh, by anyone's definition of success, Susan Everett, um, your engagement with your own um, education uh, with Dr. Andrew through his least videos and whatever's available, the confidence that you had just to listen to it there, you know, not pushing it, just listening to it to gain knowledge for yourself, better understanding for yourself and what you're going to do with it, it kind of spilled over or became attractive to, to Judy. Mm -hmm. And Judy kind of, you know, once she kind of, quote, she didn't get in the business. Judy did not get in the business. No. Judy tried a product and then she began to get some confidence with one and then another. And then obviously when she lost uh, her husband, she was in a business with us. We had a relationship. And so she gained confidence really in this whole group of people here as much as anything, as well as the product. And then she goes to get her treatments done and she's got enough confidence to wear her Zelise mask. Now she's not going to say a word about it, but she's going to have Zelise mask. <laughs> and so, you know, if you define success by impacting another person's life, who then impacts another person's life, you know, to me, that's like a very, very high level of success. Mm -hmm. And then to be on this, you know, tonight to share this story of how this all came about to me, that is defining success very differently than many times how we define success in the world or even within Zelise. And so what we, Lisa and I, are trying to do with Zelise and with our teams and with individuals and so forth is to help you better define what success looks like for you and to pursue that. And then if there's other areas of success to help that you will desire outside of what you're already doing, to then expand into those paths of success. And so to me, this is a great story, just simply about Lachey. But the greater story is two sisters who have traveled a path of what I would call very, very high success with Zelise that has nothing to do with income, rank, you know, achievement, none of those things. But it is a very, to me, it's a very much high standard of success on this particular path. So I just have one question, Judy. What? what is what is better and and uh, easier for people to see than a Zelise mask? T-shirt, <laughs> skin on a jeep. <laughs> Look at Lisa; she's stepping it up. She, <laughs> there you go. You can't unsee it. You can't unsee it. Yeah. yeah. So, like There's Steve Todd said, here's what Steve Todd says. Uh, and he, then obviously this couple is, I mean, they're so full. They just ooze love, man. I'm telling you both of them just ooze love. But before you get off the phone with Steve and you're talking about love and love and love, he's going to go, yeah, but we got to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. Making money. It's a business. <laughs> so, you know. We, Lisa, we, yes. I want to know if I get the Jeep, does it come with the big bottle of CBD on the top? <laughs> uh, you know we're still working on that if y'all saw that okay. yeah that's like four years old and we just had to get them to buy into that you guys this is actually a really i'm glad you brought this up judy you guys reels now christina i'm sure you guys some of y'all kristen probably mary ellen some of you guys are probably really good at reels but this is a new discovery that we found this four-year-old little video clip of how doing something hysterical and then that Facebook's like, do you want to make a reel of this? And I'm like, yes. And I was just <laughs> practicing with some of the different features. And then all of a sudden it has a thousand views. A thousand. Judy brings it up tonight. <laughs> so here's, so we went to the training with Luis. Well, we could go Wednesday. And <laughs> since then I have been like, okay, you know, I'm teachable. You know, I don't know everything. I'm teachable. I don't know what the, 
I don't know what I'm doing on these things. I'm making them too long. I do, you know, I'm doing all this stuff, but I'm doing it. I'm trying to do it. And, um, but then we pull out this old video that we had between the two of us way back when we first fell in love and are traveling the country. And it was pretty funny. Lisa laughs at me all the time. So it's out there on Facebook on a reel. And, uh, but yeah, we'll get you one of those bottles, Judy. We're going to figure out a way to get it. It's going to be inflatable. Do you mind? It might have to have an anchor to have a little inflatable bottle on the top. You if you know? don't know what we're talking about, y'all got to watch that. You guys Lisa's. go find the reel from Hal from like well, four But years. it's on you. It's, 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 on on my, it's on my Facebook. On your somewhere. personal Facebook. My personal Lisa Facebook. Yeah. I don't know where you find reels, guys. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> Honestly, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, that's from today. That's, that's not from today. It. That's yeah. a real serious one. Yeah, that's me <laughs> being very vulnerable today. Yeah, stepping out and doing something. Yeah, I you know I don't know if you guys how much you're playing with uh, social media, but uh, you know Christina, you're one of the best um, on social media. I see your videos, your lives, and um, you guys, you don't have to be good. <laughs> You just have to say yes to Facebook when they ask if you want to make right. a reel. We prom you promised we would wrap this up, I did. and I've been talking too much. But I got a daughter calling from California with my grandson for Father's Day, so I want to jump to that. <laughs> so we'll we'll, we'll be uh, we'll be closing up here. Any questions, comments uh, regarding June twenty second or anything else before we close? I want to see all of you guys there, including Cindy Alvarado, Kristen Olander. Let's see who else is there. Chad, I don't think we've met you. Not yet. Are you do you want to introduce Chad? Or does he want to be in <laughs> Okay. Does anybody want to speak for Chad tonight? <laughs> I, I can speak for Chad. Chad is one of my uh co-workers here at uh Davies Community Hospital up in Washington, Indiana. He's up in Greene County. And um, he and his wife um, have, have started um, becoming active with, uh, with the business. They've tried the product. And um, he's, since kind of jumping into it, he's uh, making a go at it, uh, getting on each of the calls every week and uh, taking good notes. And so he's... Um, I think he's still planning on being there on June 26th. I know he was trying to find coverage because he works the next morning, but if he can get that first part of the shift covered, because there's an hour time difference between uh, uh, Washington and Evansville. Right. It's in that weird zone. Well, I'll say this, Chad, if you hang around Michael very much or uh, <laughs> Amelia, you might win something. Like these these guys produce Didn't, winners. I think he already, Maybe he already has. Has. I think he, already, he was yeah. the one that, <laughs> Chad, did you win something? I would say, what was it two weeks ago, Mike? That yeah. I that I won the cruise. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I think that's the same one. Yeah, we just hadn't seen your face. There you are. Yeah. Well, there you welcome are. to the least, Chad. Just Thank get you. ready to buckle your seatbelt. So for, he got on his first freedom call, like he'd been in the he'd been with yeah. us in maybe twenty four hours or something. <laughs> Gets on the least freedom call and wins a cruise. I'm telling you, isn't that great? I love it. And now I don't know if we can say this, but we're going to do it anyway. We got permission from corporate to give away a cruise to only to ambassadors on Thursday. In one Evansville. cruise in yeah. Evansville. It's a drawing. It's so, going to be a drawing. So so if you come, you get one entry. If you bring a guest, you get two entries. You bring another <laughs> guest, you get three entries. And if you are married or have a, you know, whoever they get your name in the hat and so you maybe all we cruise together but uh and then we also have some giveaways that corporate's helping us with um for guests and uh, we're making it really special uh, we've asked for support from corporate and from angie and, and the corporate team and they're giving it so i really think you know um now here's the deal you know that can work against you um you know, if you're giving away a cruise, it's like, you know, the fewer the number, the better. But that's not the uh, that's not the idea. Right. So anyway. All right. Well, I'm going to jump because uh, we got. Yay, question. Chad. We'll, we'll look forward to meeting you in person. And I uh, can't wait to give uh, get hugs from all of you guys. He said, is there a cost? It is ten dollars for ambassadors or ambassador couples. Um, and then if you bring a guest, they are free. Thank you again, Christina, for, for doing this. And we're starting at six. Of course, you'll see it. But I think we're yeah, I think it, it, Christina, tell us the schedule again. Um, 
5.30 to 6.30, we're doing a training. And then at seven o'clock, we'll start the, the, main, the main thing, <laughs> the main event. Yep. And Carrie Suits uh, is a nurse practitioner, presidential ambassador. She and, and her team are actually going to be there as well. So yes. uh, you guys, we're going to have some great, great fun, great stories. And um, Evansville is a very special place in the world of Zalish. You guys have heard me say this before, but what's going on in Evansville on the, on the 22nd is the first. And so uh, you guys uh, are very special to me and Hal and to Zalise, and we just can't wait to see everybody. So much love to you guys. We're going to stop the recording here.